Okay, um, uh, this is the uh, meeting of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, my name is David Bloomberg, and I'm here with fellow board members Elizabeth Silver and Sherry Taylor, along with Nathan Chung from the uh, City Office of Planning and Sustainability, who is providing staff support to the board. Um, this uh, meeting is being recorded, um, and we have three items on the agenda. Uh, notice of today's hearing was published on September 14th and September 21st, 2023. And um, uh, before we start, I'll ask that anyone who addresses the board in connection with any application or for public comment, first give your name and address for the record that's being kept. Um, and before we start with uh, hearing the three applications before us tonight, we always open with an opportunity for public comment, uh, which means that if there is any member of the public here uh, who is not here to address one of the three applications pending before us, uh, this is your opportunity to address general comments to the board, Again, not related to any of the three applications before us tonight. You'll have a chance to address any of those applications when we get to them. So I'll ask, is there any member of the public here who would like to address general comments to the board unrelated to tonight's applications? Nathan, I'll ask you to help me. Are we, we're not seeing any hands up or chat messages looking to speak. None yet. Yeah, please raise your virtual hand on the reactions or just type a message if you want to, you know, say something. Uh, this and is for, for public general... comment unrelated to tonight's three applications. All right. Seeing none. Okay, so then we'll move on. So again, I'll ask anyone presenting or addressing the board to first provide your name and address for the record. And we'll start with the application uh, for a finding to install a deck that extends the four foot non-conforming left side setback by another eight foot, by another eight feet. The applicant is Zach Kundal. Property is at 193 Prospect Street, Northampton, map ID 24D-040. Uh, and for a finding, we need a simple majority, which would be a vote of two of the three members. I also want to acknowledge Sarah Northrup, I believe, is with us as well. She is another member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, and I believe since we have three full members, Sarah, Elizabeth, and myself, we will be the three voting members tonight. And but of course, we welcome the input from Sherry Taylor as well. Um, so is there either the applicant or a representative of the applicant, Zach Kundel, present to give a brief description of the uh, application for the finding that's before us? Yes, my name is Maria Dean. I'm from Perry's Line Home Improvement. Okay. And your address, please, or your business address? Uh, it's a P.O. box. But I'm sorry, I don't have in front of me. Okay. I mean, when Zach filled out the application, he actually put his own his own personal address. Okay. The application is for me. I'm Jolie Hetler, and I live at 193 Prospect Street in Northampton. I don't know if that's helpful. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nathan, is that enough for the record? If if the uh, contractor who's going to be addressing gives a PO box, or which actually hasn't given a PO box. I, I just for the request to be safe, I have Maria's email with the PO box. Uh, okay. I'll just read it. Um, well, Maria, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, go Maria, ahead. please uh, verify if this is correct or not. Uh, Maria Dean, Parish Home Improvement, 137 Main Street, PO Box 312, Haydenville, Massachusetts 01039. That is correct. Thank you. Okay, and if you'd like to go ahead and just give a brief description of the uh, relief that you're seeking in the application for a finding. Yes, we're proposed to build a deck um, 
eight foot out from the back of 139 Prospect Street. It will be 20 feet long. In doing so, it will be 56 inches away from the property line. And is that 193 Prospect? I think you said 139 Prospect. Yes, the one, applicant. Yeah. It's 193. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Go I'm ahead. Sorry. It's okay. And um, you needed more information? Uh well, just just the, the, the reason that a finding is is required from the zoning board of appeals. Because Massachusetts zoning requires five feet. And it's going to be 56 inches from our property line, not five feet. Okay. So the deck is going to not encroach any more than it currently does, but I'm on a non-conforming lot. So I'm just extending the current um, line from my house and having the deck go to the edge of my house. Right, so this is an expansion of a non-conformity because there's already- I don't think it's an expansion. I think it's, right? It, it, it's not an expansion of the non-conforming- But it's an alteration of a non-conforming structure. Right, but the setback I don't think is, is changing. Isn't that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Okay, uh, any questions from the board members about this application? I, I don't know, um, Nathan, have we had any comments from DPW or I, I think I, I can't remember if this is the one where we had one comment or if that was the next one, but um, are there any comments from either public or DPW? Uh, yes, uh, there was a written comment from the public. Um, give me one second, one public. Uh, Dear, Deirdre Doherty. And I'm just gonna open it up. Sorry for the delay. She she said that if she would rec she would uh, agree she would uh, consent or approve uh, or give her support to it, provided that the board. Review includes grading and drainage within the scope of the project review and includes a condition that appropriate drainage ensuring infiltration within the property is maintained into the future. She said she heard from others in the neighborhood that the is 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 Miss Miss Doherty on the this in the room or on the okay, maybe that's why she sent the email. She, yeah, said she, she said she's maybe we can ask the applicant or the representative to address this. The Ms. Doherty indicated that um, from what um, I, I can probably address. I don't know Ms. Doherty, but I can probably address whatever she heard. I right. had it was mentioned that you've done some landscaping, grading, and drainage changes in preparation for the projects because of Correct. concerns raised by the neighborhoods regarding drainage and you modify so, the drainage so it can infiltrate within your property and so no longer direct drain directly to adjacent properties. Is that all correct? Um, partially. I, I was not aware of any drainage issues before I did the, the preparation work and the preparation work was just a little bit of grading in addition to burying a downspout into my yard. And the company that did it had some miscommunications within their um, people and um, had to redo everything and install a drywall. It, it's all fixed now. I'm happy to share information, but there there were there were two days where it was not clear that what was going to happen was going to be friendly to a neighbor, and um, everybody involved, including the owner of the company, apologized. And I think I'm getting the work for free because it was kind of a mess. But it's fixed now. Everything goes into a drywall in my yard, or drywall in my yard that didn't exist before. So if anything, it'll be less water into the neighbors. Okay, thanks. And I don't think there were any other public comments. And Nathan, you said that there were no DPW comments. No, no DPW comments. Any other questions from board members? Not for me. No. Need to close the public hearing. 
Second. Okay, and a roll, since we're virtual, a roll call, please, for the vote on uh, the motion to close the public hearing. Yes. Uh, uh, David? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Okay. And do we have a motion on the application for the finding? Sure. I'll uh, move to approve the um, application for a finding to install a new deck that will stay within the pre existing non conforming left side setback. And do we have a second? Second. By roll call. David? Uh, it, it just occurs to me, even though we closed the public hearing, I don't know that I, and it's kind of too late because, well, we'll have to deal with it. I'm not sure if I asked if there were any other members of the public here who wanted to address this application. Um, are you seeing any hands raised, Nathan? Or um, yeah, Please raise your hands or type in your comment uh, into the I'm chat. Not quite sure what we do about it, but... Can reopen um, the hearing. We've yeah, done we've that before, reopen, but yeah, yeah, no. I, I think everybody here is for is other accounted hearings. for. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we're not seeing anyone else. Thank you. In that case, yes. Why don't we go ahead with the roll call vote on the motion, which was seconded to uh, grant the finding in accordance with the terms of the application. Right, and uh, by roll call, David. Yes, in favor. Elizabeth. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, thank you. You're welcome. And we'll move on to the second item. Well, yeah, it's it's past 545, so we can now move to the second item on tonight's agenda, which was the application for a finding to change the garage to a private studio while retaining the non-conforming zero-foot left side setback submitted by Livewell Home Improvement at 181 Crescent Street, map ID 24C-177. Again, it's a finding, so it requires a simple majority, two out of three member vote to approve. Uh, and the board has to determine that altering the pre-existing non-conforming structure will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming nature and use of the structure. So is there somebody here presenting or is the applicant here to present, please? Yes, um, my name's Andrew Biagirelli. I'm here on behalf of Live Well Home Improvement. Um, the project is at 181 Crescent Street. Our business address is 106 State Road in Waitley. And um, I have provided um, plans um, as well as scope of work. Um, and it's it's a pretty simple project. Um, we are um, we've determined by uh, taking a look at the structure that it's structurally sort of not feasible to convert it as it stands um, with roof structure concerns and ability to bring it up to uh, code for um, for our values and, and energy efficiency. The walls are too too thin, um, two by four construction. So we're applying to build a new studio to the exact same proportions. Um, but of course it's a non-conforming structure pre-existing because it sits directly on the left side property line with a zero foot setback. Um, but according to the, um, I think it's section 350-92 and 93, um, the, the conditions are that it not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming structure. And because it's gonna be used as a private studio and and it will be um, the exact same proportions, um, we do not believe that it will have any detriment to the neighborhood. And we've also made plans to address any potential um, any potential issues during construction with, you know, increased traffic in and out of the site. Uh, and I've, I've also outlined that in the application in terms of the number of vehicles on site and work hours will be, you know, limited to normal daytime business hours. So, um, yeah, that's, that's all I have really more or less as a summary. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, any questions from board members? I have a few, but um, is there any other comments like DPW and neighbors? 
There is actually somebody who just tried to join. He's a commenter uh, for the C communicate to me earlier, but uh, he's having trouble getting in. He seems uh, he's actually logging in from uh, Force Library due to his own familiarity with the Zoom. Um, besides that, there were no um, there were no written public comments, either neither from DPW or or the general public. Okay. Well, my first uh, question, I didn't. Well, I was curious from looking at the plans. Is it uh, originally connected to the building on the next lot? It is not. That the um, the site plan that I used was uh, a map that I pulled from the the town's GIS. Mm -hmm. and there is a garage on the adjoining lot, but they they don't connect. There's right. a there's a small amount of space between them, probably about two or three feet. Hmm. Yeah, they're pretty they're pretty close together. Than I thought they're yeah. not touching. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, are we not addressing the use? Is that oh. uh, is that true with the, the application? The use, yes. Yeah. So the or, the original use is a garage. Mm -hmm. um, the new use is a private studio for the homeowner. Um, so it's it's not a business. There won't be any increased traffic in the neighborhood uh -huh. due to, due to the use because it's just for private private use for crafting and dance and okay. uh, for that that nature so i got a little confused you talked about parking and business hours etc right yeah i was i was more addressing like concerns during constructions because of the because of the nature of the the project of building it back up from the from the ground up but you know ah. uh, okay thank you yeah. said there weren't going to be more than uh, two people on the premises during construction time yeah, so yeah. two two work vehicles, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then just um, I know that there was one other concern about the egress and that the uh, the exit door. I think you put this in the plans that it's not going to be on the southeast side. Um, it's not going to be on the side facing the setback. Um, Correct. Order, right. Correct. Yep. Okay. That that wall, as it currently stands, has no doors or windows and. When we rebuild it, it will remain that way for you know privacy and uh, all of that. I don't have any other questions, um, but I know that the owner who's looking to do this is with us, and I didn't know if she had anything to say to add. Quick question: and How how long should we should we be granted this this uh, zoning board um, approval? How long will the approval be? Um, um, active. Is it two years, Nathan? You have to commence construction within two years, or is it three years in Northampton? I think it's, uh, I mean, for special permit, it's two years. Apologies. Uh, I don't know if it's different for finding, but I think it's safe to say it's probably three years or uh, maybe two years, but I think it might be. Uh, so special permits have three years. This is uh, a little bit lighter than a special permit, but uh, I'll double check that and I'll get back to the applicant uh, with that information. And, and normally, <clears throat> normally you would have to wait for the expiration of the appeal period, assuming we grant the request for the finding and the appeal period is 20 days after the formal decision is delivered. Not, not 20 days from today, but 20 days after Nathan's office delivers the decision to the city clerk. At the end of the 20 days, you can get a certified uh, certified copy from the city clerk stating that no appeals have been filed. That should be recorded in the land records. And normally when you provide a copy of that recorded document to the building inspector, that's when the building inspector will issue the building permit. Um, sometimes people can get it sooner, but there's a risk that there could be an appeal filed. And then the standard is... Uh, um, within it's either two or three years, and that can be confirmed afterwards. Uh, you have to substantially commence work on the project to avoid the uh, the approval expiring. Uh, but once it's built, that's a permanent change. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. If that was the question, yeah, it's but once you build it, it's permanent. Um, I think if I could just ask, I'm sorry, did you have any other questions? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I think it might be the southwest side wall where we it, don't yeah, want I, any I, egress I doors, not the southeast. So, 
Sorry. So I guess the question for the applicant or the representative is, I'm assuming that wouldn't be, there'd be no objection or concerns if the board made it as a condition of the approval of the finding, a prohibition on any egress doors on the southwest sidewall of the of the replacement structure. Um, that would be fine with me. Right. It, I don't know. I don't know that we would even be able to squeeze through that. <laughs> right. And, that, and also, as I understand it, it should be it shouldn't present any issues if we required the accessory structures used to be limited to ancillary storage and workspace for the to to their single family residents. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's not a it's not a, a livable. It's not a um, an apartment or anything. There's there will be no plumbing. It's uh, is that what you mean? It's, uh... Well, I mean, not plumbing specifically, but it's not not supposed to be for for yeah for uh, for a, a living space, a dwelling. It's not supposed to be used as a dwelling, so called dwelling unit. Exactly. Yeah. Airbnb. Right. Right. But but if there was a desire to use it for a workspace or business, does that then prompt a requirement to come back? For another finding because home businesses under circumstances as we know are allowed so if we're putting any limits on that and you know it doesn't sound like this is even anticipated by the applicant but if we're putting those limits is that reasonable because they would otherwise have to come back i guess it's a question for nathan but the language comes from nathan's office the suggested restriction for use it for ancillary storage and workspace I yeah i, I think um i put down the word after discussing with the, my senior staff um i'm thinking maybe it creates a little ambiguous i think workspace the way we put it meant to be like a like a workshop or like a not a professional commercial activity and so the board may want to um apologize for the ambiguity but the board may want to clarify and you know put in a restriction that to clarify that it's not for like a commercial use um i okay. think it just meant i meant i think we our intention was to indicate so accessory structure meant for like storage or um accessory accessory activity that's not a principal activity not, not for dwelling unit and not for commercial or business commercial, use. Yeah. that's helpful thank you nathan okay Good. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, Chair. Um, one thing I want to clarify, um, this already I addressed it with the applicant, uh, 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 Andrew, I caught it earlier. Uh, the way the captions are written down in the plan, um, it's a little bit incorrect. It's inconsistent. So sometimes the captions say the wall without any walls or windows. Um, it's one, it's north, sometimes it's south. So it's a little bit inconsistent, but for the record, would you would you clarify that the wall for the proposed building structure that's facing the uh, left left side lot line with the zero feet setback? Could you confirm the that side with the zero feet setback is the wall with no windows or walls? Of course. Do you want you want me to confirm that? Yes, either okay. And, yeah, I'm or, just pulling up the the revised plans that yeah. I sent you this afternoon just to just to clarify it. Uh, I see the the west. It looks like the is it the west elevation? Yep. It is. Yep. The west elevation is the one that, that is the west elevation existing and on the proposed uh, new structure. And that's the one that faces. So we we use the term southwest, but but it's the one that is flush against the lot line correct and to the a butter to the left if you're i think standing on crescent street and looking at the building it's to your left right yes so we really should be saying the west elevation not southwest okay at least as shown on the plans as right? shown on the plans if if uh if you need us to change that we can we can alter that to say uh southwest um but yes, that's that's correct. That is it is now consistent in the the updated plans that we received back from the architect today. So, yeah. but in yeah. those plans, the west elevation appears not to have any doors or windows. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, looking at the north arrow on the lot plan map, 
southwest seems more accurate than west but Gotcha. As long as we know which one we're talking about, the wall right. facing the lot line where there's the zero setback, right? Correct. We'll have no egress or, or windows. Correct. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Um, and I wonder if this, the member of the public who wanted to spoke, speak was able to get access, do we know? Yes, I there in as reference number two. Um, so they are we allowing for public comments at this point? I think if there are no more questions from board members, we could ask if any members of the public would like to uh, address the application. And questions should be directed to the board, not to the applicant. Please. Does anybody want to speak? And. Um, David, I just want to um, tell reference number two, um, I think you dropped in earlier. If you have trouble with your audio speaking into the computer, you can chat, uh, you can type it into the chat and we can we can read it out for the public. And uh, please say your name and your address. How did this individual communicate a few minutes ago, Nathan, with you? They they actually dropped by in person. Oh. In the office. So earlier they tried to join as reference number one, which I think is another Forbes library computer. They said they'll be joining from Forbes library. So in earlier reference number one, I trouble having connecting with audio. And it seems like uh, the person might be having the same issue, but the individual did drop by in person. Um, uh, a couple hours before the hearing. Do you have any idea of the substance of their comments? No, the uh, the commenter did not actually indicate what he was wishing to say. Do you have that person's cell phone? Because they can communicate directly just by their phone. We don't have to see them. Right. Um, no, I don't have, uh, I provide them with our contact info, but um, he didn't leave me with their contact info. And I think the under, the hope, the understanding or and the hope was that they'll be able to communicate via Zoom. So um, somehow, yeah, it seems like they don't have any uh, audio either. And uh, do you know which application the it's, person it's, sitting at it's reference this. number two? Computer, it's this, this one. This one, one eighty one crescent. crescent. Hmm. Um, not sure what to do. I mean, we oh, oh it's, looks like we lost them. Yeah, maybe I'll try to call in on a phone. Yeah, mm -hmm. or so. That's I also true. offer them the option to call me if they have issues, but they haven't called me so. You did you give them, them give them your your number to call? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I offered actually. I did offer, and he he already knew my number well well before, and uh, I offered to remind him again, but he said he doesn't need it. Um, Do you know if they lived on Crescent Street, Nathan? No, the um person didn't really. They dropped by in person, but he didn't identify himself. So um, I don't know his proximity to the applicant's address or any actually any personally identifying information. Yeah. Except I might obviously. ask. Yeah. I might ask. Excuse me. I might ask the applicant if if she might have any idea who this person is. I'm not sure what else we can do. Frankly, I I might I might have an idea who this person is. Um, yeah, I do. It's possible that he's in the butter. Um, on Franklin Street, that that I don't know what if I can say that, but that is a possibility. So, um, have, have you talked to the neighbors again, uh, Ms. Only Brooker? only the one who whose 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 boundary we share, and right, and, and they were fine with it. Um, okay. so that's the only person that comes to mind. Although we do have the notice out in front of the house, so anyone driving by could easily have um scene and so it sounds like from from what you said earlier that there's a period between tonight and issuing 
the approval and during which someone can contest or make comments or is that is that correct it, it would be it's it's a period of 20 days from when the decision is delivered to the city clerk normally the decisions delivered in a day or two or three we can ask nathan that question and then the 20 day clock starts and that's for a butters people with standing so they really need to be a butters okay. or with them to file an appeal but to do that okay. they they have to actually i believe file a lawsuit with either land court or superior court if i'm not mistaken okay which is a big step for somebody to take uh, unless they've already yeah. but but um Okay. Well, I, I'm not sure, Nathan. Well, what else I think that do? since Go ahead. Nathan has reached out and talked with this individual and given his phone number, um, I, I think we've done what we can. Yeah, I'm not sure there's anything else we can do. And it does appear as though he got in twice and um, could have had audio. I, I'm not sure how what the library setup is, but okay. Yes, he called earlier yesterday or two days ago and then about joining in via Zoom, how to do that. So I gave him a summary and then he dropped by in person today uh, to get clarification and pick up the, a copy of the agenda, which I provided to him. Um, and he specifically said it's about the Crescent Street project, which we are at right now. Um, hmm. We haven't had this happen since COVID started, where there was somebody who couldn't seem to get through. But I, I Elizabeth, I, I I think I agree with you. I'm not sure what else we can do, um, especially if he had Nathan's number and knew that he could just call Nathan's number on the phone if he wanted to be heard, if nothing else works. So it's possible that he's, I suppose, decided not not to speak. But I I can't. We can't know that. Does 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 the person um would the person have access by looking at the agenda to and I don't I don't know if the person was on the call when we were discussing the the sort of parameters of the project. So I don't know if he learned anything through this meeting simply by listening that satisfied some questions or concerns. Yeah, I'm not sure when he joined. I to, yeah. to be able to answer that's a good question but i don't know the answer um he, he joined from my memory he joined a couple minutes in after your hearing started on oh. this and then he dropped out he joined that reference one and somehow he couldn't have trouble joining with the audio so he dropped out um for whatever region and then later on tried to rejoin as reference two and uh you know i asked him if he had trouble with audio to type in but he may not have uh Right. Maybe he didn't hear me, but yes. Um. Didn't know how to do it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, I think I think the board just has to make a decision here. If I'm not sure, there's anything else we can do. Feels like we're uh, making an effort, and it is recorded for the record. Um, and and we've, anyone and can review it and appeal if necessary, or just we, ask for more information. And we've and we've given effectively now we've provided more time to try to establish a connection if if only by calling Nathan and, and that hasn't happened so uh, I'm inclined to just move forward. That would be good too because I'm going to need to depart soon. Okay. <laughs> so I, I would um, recommend that we move forward. I feel like this has gone beyond effort. Nathan has done everything he can, and we have done everything we can to right. allow this person to speak. Right. So so I would just again note for the record that this individual has Nathan's phone number and now has been given five to ten minutes to, to call in effectively to Nathan's number if, if he was otherwise unsuccessful and was trying to communicate with us. So I think, should we go ahead with a motion to close the public hearing? So, so moved. <laughs> second. Was, second. So Sarah, second. Sarah, Sarah moved and Elizabeth second, maybe. Okay. And then okay. Yeah. Just a roll call on that, please. Yes. Uh, I roll call David. Yes. Elizabeth. Yes. Sarah. Yes. And a motion on the application for the finding. 
if there are no more board questions from the board members. Actually, we can't we can't get answers, so I think we just have to mm -hmm. we can have discussion and or have a motion on the finding. Hmm. I'll make a motion that okay. we grant the finding um, for the application. Um, excuse me, let me say the uh, uh, for 181 Crescent Street. Parcel 24C, lot 177, as presented. And with the friendly amendment, if all right with you, um, that the structure not have egress doors on the, I think we settled on the southwest side wall. Right. Um, and that it not be used for ancillary storage or commercial purposes. But it can be used for storage. It cannot be used for dwelling or commercial or business, I think. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I agree is that, that okay, Nathan? Uh, yes. One one more thing. Um, uh, besides egress doors, do you want to require no egress doors or windows, or do you just want to say egress doors? You know, I, I don't know why windows would be offensive. I can although, see. although, excuse me, I would point out that the the plans as presented do not have doors or windows. So that is correct. But also, I'm just say to... as as presented. Well, okay. I mean, we we could, but I also don't think it offends any ordinance or requirements, and it would allow for light. In you know, if they ultimately decided to add them, so I, I guess. I would not be in favor of putting that limit. I agree. So no egress doors on the um, the uh, setback, the side setback side. That's the zero feet side setback side. Yeah, correct. Okay. You look puzzled, David. Do you uh, a... Because there could be a reason you can't have windows fire rating, but because uh, it's so close to the structure next door, but it otherwise has to comply with all yeah, fire there's safety there's and building codes anyway, whether we say it or not. Yeah. So that's why I'm I'm okay with what we're saying. Just no egress. Okay. Uh, I'll second with all those friendly amendment amendment amendments. <laughs> and and um, just in terms of discussion. Um, uh, I'm I'm comfortable voting in favor on the basis that I don't think the uh, result here would be uh, substantially more detrimental to the characteristics of the neighborhood. Um, might want to mention that in the record, and then uh, and then if we're ready for a vote, uh, Nathan, were you clear about the motion with the conditions? Uh, would you clarify actually? So did he settle on just uh, no egress in general or no egress doors? Egress doors. Okay. It's true that a window can be used for emergency egress if necessary, and that would be right. governed by building code. Okay. And so um, only for ancillary storage and I'll say ancillary storage and activities, uh, ancillary to the dwelling, but the oh. structure should not be used for dwelling or commercial purposes. Correct. Correct. Okay, and then I guess we could have a roll call. Okay, by roll call. David? Yes, in favor. Elizabeth? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Okay, that's unanimous. Congratulations. Okay, Mr. Chair, I need to leave you, but um, Sherry is here and you're in good hands. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thanks. See you later. Thank, thank you, Paul. Bye, you. Elizabeth. You're welcome. You good, good luck with the project. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. And uh, I guess, let me just check the timing here. I think we're probably good for, uh, when's the next one? Uh, 6 p.m. Yeah, we're way past 6 p.m. So, so we'll go ahead and hear the third and last item on the agenda tonight, which was scheduled for 6 p.m. and it's 6.14 p.m., so that's fine. And that's the application for a special permit for an 85-square-foot awning sign on a 308-square-foot facade by Ken Zhu Lee at 211 Main Street. Nice T, I think is the name of the business. Map ID 31D-136-002. 
the sign exceeds 10% of the facade and therefore requires a ZBA special permit. It's essentially an oversized sign as I understand it. Um, so is uh, there either the applicant or a representative of the applicant here to present on this application? Oh, I think yes, you're sir. muted, sir. Yeah, they're having audio issues. Um, but it looks like they're muted. I mean, I see the muted symbol. Yes, please unmute. I still see the muted symbol. Um, either that better? Yes, we just heard you. Uh, yes, Kian uh, Zuli, or otherwise known as Danny, is the English name. Um, but I'm my name is Steve Lemieux, and I'm uh, uh, a back end kind of person helping him out with with this business. So I, I wrote a little thing up to give a little history. And is it time for me to read this off? Uh, sure. Is it something that's already in the application no. materials? Okay. Well, general information to give you a background. Of it. Um, Gian opened a nice tea, bubble tea shop on Saturday, May 27, 23. We were and are currently working with sign maker Leroy Davidson from LNG Signs and Designs. Leroy was not familiar with the planning and zoning policies in Northampton. We found out through our many searches, that of which is needed. We have made efforts to fit in with our idea for signage for the business. We feel that our awning sign is well-made, not flashy, and to be fitting for the 211 Main Street area. Nathan, um, as, uh, has helped us fill in the blanks, trying to secure permission and erecting our sign. We look forward to a favorable decision so that we can ramp up business through more foot traffic, enhance the area with a beautiful sign and in-store graphics, which are already there. As a footnote, our product and variety is perfectly delicious for the location. Everyone is welcome to sip, relax, and converse with their friends on our comfy couches. Thank you very much for your consideration, Steve. Okay myself and uh yeah thank you uh, did we get the uh the speaker's uh full name and address uh steve lemu l-e-m-i-e-u-x 1291 parker street springfield mass 01129 thank you okay um we do have a, a an email in the file addressed to the board that I um, just want to make sure the board members are aware of. Uh, it uh, seems to be signed by a Butters at 213, 215 Main Street, 241 Main Street, 190-194 Main Street, and 196-200 Main Street. They said, therefore, please enter this letter into the record four times. So we're acknowledging that this uh, is, comes from four different abutters. And they said the sign dwarfs all other signs on the block, which are 30% to 50% the size. It is out of proportion to the neighborhood. And while this may not be a statutory reason for objection, we also feel strongly that aesthetically, that kind of glowing sign is not in keeping with Main Street's 19th century buildings. General Main Street is less, quote, garish, unquote, appearance. There are some very few examples of backlit awning signs on Main Street and even fewer, both, both oversized and done in, quote, safety yellow, unquote. I would expect to see the proposed sign on Riverdale Road in Springfield or a Midtown Manhattan convenience store or on the concessions concourse at an arena. I realize this is subjective, but I've been involved in the look of Main Street for almost 50 years. I would call the applicant's attention to the signage for Lime Red Tea House or Gombo. These signs are not in any way staid or old fashioned. They are vibrant and playful, but in my mind, they're interesting aesthetic additions to the street. Thank you, Jordy Harold, Streetscape, Lime Red, Gombo. I'm not, uh, I can't quite tell who's signing this other than Jordy Harold. He's, he says he's speaking for those four different abutters of those addresses. So, for what that's worth, that is in the file. Has there been any any 
comment from anyone else, Nathan, or from DPW? Uh, no comment from um anybody else in the general public, but the DPW did note that um uh if the awning structure itself, not the sign, but the awning, it does require what's called the DPW awning and blocking uh permit as well. Um and yes, yeah. that. so that can happen after this determination. Uh you know, if the board decides to, or whether it or decides to approve or disapprove, if they wish to install some kind of awning, they'll require a DPW permit as yeah. well. Yeah, and has said and, she has both of those. And when we finish and when the 20 days expires, um, she'll be glad to give them to us and, and go to work on it. Okay, any questions from other board members? Uh, can I interject something also? Sure. I Please. took another thing, being the nutball I am, I, I read Jody's email and I had to take a look today before the meeting to go walk around and I saw many mega signs um, that are close to, if not almost on top of uh, our shop and uh, that are, that they dwarf ours. Uh, so, um, I, I I agree with Jody when he said that there are some aesthetically pleasing and that sort of thing. Um, but as far as how many and the percentage, the, there are a lot more very large signs on Main Street in that area than he's leading on to believe. Can you give any examples just out of curiosity? I took some pictures today. I'm sorry? I took some pictures today. Okay. And I taught and I uh, interviewed some of the customers, the abutters next to us, and, and asked how our shop was doing. And all I got was positive responses for three or four of those places. Let's see if I have a name for you. Uh, Main Street Cleaners. Then there's that one at 231. I didn't. Kitchen. That's the one that the line comes right out to the curb. Um, and then which one is that? Hanush Jewelers has a huge um, awning and a sign above that, and it's lit sign. And then there's one. It's I got the color of it. Let's see. Oh, uh, Peter Pockets is another one. Is it possible if that's on your phone that you can hold up the picture? Because I'm trying to picture those things and I'm not seeing them as big awnings. Can you see now? Yeah. No, unfortunately. Um, look at where oh, the... Wait. One thing I can do is uh, I can share a, street, a Google Street View. There you uh -huh. go. And I think the problem is, uh, I don't, I think my, my, my mistake, I accidentally made Steve Galaxy, Steve's Galaxy Tab the host rather than me. So Steve, are you controlling the other Galaxy Tab as well? Am I what? Do you have a second Galaxy Tab that's connected to Searing? Yes. Could you, I, I don't know how it happened, but could you make me the host again? This is so embarrassing, but could you make me the host? Or Steve. Leave or, the we had, we had got away from that because it wasn't working properly, but you want me to hook back onto it, you're saying? You know, it's it's okay. Um, he could just, uh, um, I don't have he a good could time. leave the meeting. Oh, I see. oh, yeah. Would you leave the meeting on the Galaxy tab? Could you, on the Galaxy tab, could you leave the Galaxy tabs meeting? Just drop out entirely? Leave yeah. Oh, okay. Danny, how do I put So leave the meeting, right? Oh, uh, you, you, you want to leave the yep. cancel it? Cancel it, yeah. Okay. I want to cancel it. Or make someone else the host. Yeah. Either make me the host. I, sorry about this. Yeah. No, I, I didn't do that. It's the first oh, time okay. I've done Zoom. I think okay. we're on. Does it show you? Are you no. out of it? Am I out of it? No. Oh, oh no. Okay. You're still there. Wrote the names down.
in the meantime, actually, I can I can share the. Actually, I'm allowed to share the screen. It seems like. Go ahead. It's a lot of it, right? David is the host. Oh, okay, great. Um, I'm gonna go to Google Maps and then share some share some signs on the um on the uh, North Hampton. So while you're pulling that up, um, is it, uh, it sounds like what you're discussing, Mr. Steve Applicant Representative, uh -huh. um, that the sign they're proposing, um, you're suggesting that it is not um, out of character with others, right. presumably permitted signs. And, and that's something I don't know. I don't have knowledge of and evidence of the approved permit applications for all the other signs on Main Street and their compliance with uh, Section 7.2M, which is pretty clear. Oh, oh there okay. we go. That's much smaller, the Hanush Jewelers. Okay. Wow, look at that. Which would suggest they didn't need a permit because it's not an oversized sign. Which one? Hanush Jewelers. Jewelers. Oh, but even with that awning? I think there because may be. So it's it. it's something more for the building commissioner to review. There may be a potential unnoticed issue with the sign. So you're allowed, um, if you have an awning, you're allowed a one wall sign or an awning sign, but not necessarily both without a special permit. Okay. But by default on the awning, you have by right, you can have a four inch tall uh, awning sign on the edge of the awning or the bottom edge of the awning, four right. inch tall, either on the front or on the two sides. So this uh -huh. uh, particular business does have that um large H symbol on the awning in addition to the wall sign. that. That may be an issue. Uh, either they already have a special permit. I didn't go as far to verify whether they have a special permit or right. they, they might not have one, but it it, it is a, a condition that may require a special permit in most cases. So- now, um, If we look at the right, if you, can yeah. you scroll to the right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Huge, oh. Yes. The huge sign, where is it? Uh, oh, why is that all blurry over there? Oh, it's uh, some kind of a confidential, it's confidentiality issue. Google's or uh, just catching up. Oh, yeah, catching up the fog. <laughs> you you want to look at Peter Pockets? Or other, can you tell me which business you want to look at? I'm, I'm just look, trying to look up the this name. Is, no, this is oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, Keon's mm. right here. All right. In black car is, is our place. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But to the right of that is a huge, huge sign. And I talked to the people, they hadn't been in our store yet, um, but they said they had no problem with it, with it being there and they, they want to try it. But down there where, beyond the, the alleyway, where that black car is. Energy. Oh, that green one, right about there. Energy. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 that's the name of it. Synergy, yep. So you'll also note that their facade is much larger. So as a... Right, but still, if it's it still looks to be about 33%, and ours is 27%. And ours, is, ours goes up higher, like theirs does, I suppose, yeah. So I'm not prepared in this in this meeting for us to be uh, reviewing every sign permit right. on Main Street. So that 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 gets problematic to get into that level sure. of comparing details. When, but what's before us, the application before us is for uh, what, what you've submitted. And right. um, so it, it sounds like when I uh, hired a sign maker. They weren't aware of the sign regulation, uh, and that is pretty clear about the ten percent of the wall area, etc. So you have a sign. Um, 
you also have a sculpture thing there that's a different issue. Um, but uh, that's what we're calling that cup. Um, oh, the, the, the wheel, fact in, that, wheel out cup. Yeah. Um, so the, the fact that you, you've, you've ordered a sign and you have a sign or an awning right. sign that uh, yeah. money was spent on it and you're hoping to use it because you've bought it. Um, right. But it was not, no permit was applied for and the sign maker didn't look at the regulation. Right. So, uh, so f this sounds more like a waiver request, which we just don't do. Am I, what, what do you think of this, David, as far as uh, the applicable laws? Um, you know, substantially more detrimental is not our only, sometimes that's the only thing we're concerned about, but here it's just a, to me, it's just too big. Yeah. Right, it's not it, illuminated. Right. In this case, it's the standard is whether it will detract from the character of the neighborhood, uh, considering all components. Um, I mean, there is a reason for the regulation, which is that the surface area of the sign shall not be larger than 10% of the frontage wall area of the facade. Um, um, we don't write these regulations. These are city regulations. We evaluate and uh, uphold them. That's all we do. Yeah, I'm... Uh, You know, he's, he's certainly got a point comparing it to other places in the neighborhood, quote unquote, facades. So that, that that point is well taken. Right. But I don't think the issue, I agree with you, Sarah, it's, we're not in a position to, unless we continued the hearing, um, to research all these other signs that are cited, whether Which, they were granted by permit or otherwise required a permit that was never applied for or granted. Uh, the only standard, as I understand it, that we're supposed to apply is whether this sign as proposed, which is in excess of what's allowed in terms of the surface area, would detract from the, char the neighborhood, the character of, of the neighborhood. And I mean, the 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 experts at the office of planning and sustainability feel feel that it it would um and they're recommending denial of the application on that basis um i am sensitive to wanting to make sure that no one business is not treated differently than other businesses. But we're not really in a position to address that issue because we have no other information about the other signs that have been referenced. We don't really even know what their sizes are and what their dimensions are and what their surface area is relative to the size of the facade on each building. And um, and as a result, I think what we're asked to do is just make our own determination of this sign as proposed. And I also am sympathetic to the fact that this sign was ordered and prepared and presumably has to be paid for or was already paid for. Um, but I also don't think that that is relevant to the standard that we're supposed to be applying here, even as much as sympathetic as I am to that. Um, I don't know if, uh, uh, Sherry, if you have some thoughts on this. I, I do have one question I'd like to clarify. I, I'm looking at the applicable laws, so I don't know if you can see me while I'm talking, but um, the first applicable law that's mentioned 
is that the area of the sign should be the smallest quadrangle, which encompasses encompasses all of the letters, designs, and symbols. It is not the surface area of the awning, but the smallest rectangle. And I know that, you know, in terms of this whole issue of fairness, I agree that one one store or, or business should not be singled out, but even the ones he did show us, like for example, the Hanush, the actual letters, designs and symbols were a much smaller proportion of the awning. This entire awning is covered with symbols and surfaces. And I think that's where it really is different than the other things you see in town. Um, but I am sympathetic. The man's paid for this. I, I do understand that. Hmm. Um, um, at the same time, it's clearly not fitting this law. Okay. <laughs> um, would it help the board if I screen share the, the submitted sign or do you not need that? Yeah, that would be helpful. I think we okay. should consider, you know, look at everything here. Right. I mean, it was in the package, I think. It's in yes. the application. It's in the yep. package. I just looked I've at seen it. it in the application. Yep. Yes. But, but, but it could be helpful to look at it again on the screen. Yes, give me one second. Sorry about that. Um, and that would clarify also how it was measured for square footage, perhaps, depending on how you measure it, perhaps the uh, excessive, maybe, maybe it isn't really 27.6%, maybe it's only 23%, but... Um, the but point I think it's got several sorry, I, images on it. Go ahead, Sharon. I'm sorry, I really didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, I looking I was looking at it as I was talking about this applicable law, and the law is that it is the actual. So where the N is in the nice T, if that was just there, it would probably fit in the law. It's the fact that the entire front is covered. I think is where it takes it outside of the law, as I understand the law. Which kind of begs a question that may or may not be helpful to ask, and that is, since the sign has already been ordered and it sounds like it's been prepared, could it be modified? Could it be reduced in size so that it's just, uh, if I understand what Sherry is saying correctly, just consists of the material you know, necessary to include the nice tea words and maybe that image to the left of the words. Is that consistent? Yes, that's what, what you're I'm saying. saying Maybe Sharon? the image to the left and the image to the right, if they were out, it would it seems to me it would fit into the law. Additionally, the two images on the ends, um, which are shown with dimensions as 44 by 24 inches, um, perhaps not necessary. I don't I don't really know what that green triangle thing is on the left. Um, I have no idea. It's a cheesecake. Oh, <laughs> good to know. Um, I wouldn't ex really expect I it. I wouldn't guess be that either. <laughs> tea leaf. Um, so it may not serve their purposes particularly well, but that's a good point. Is that the structure of it? It may be appropriate to keep the structural size of it because it's designed to be mounted on the sides of on the front of the building, but um, it might not be. It's certainly worth letting the applicant look into whether they can somehow modify that sign to bring it into compliance, uh, even with all of that bright yellow area. The, the bottom line is that if they did modify the sign to bring it into compliance so that they did not need a special permit from this board, then good. they would just be putting up something that they, as of right, um, which effectively may be the necessary. That'd be great. Their, their necessary re remedy or recourse, if if we accept the recommendation of the Office of Planning and Sustainability here. So, can I just clarify, Nathan? I don't know if you can answer this or if it has to go back to the drawing board. But if the cheesecake went away and the and the and the two things on the right side, would it be in compliance or is it still too big? 
I, you know, it's hard to tell visually, possibly. Um, yeah, so a couple of things. So there are some couple of discrepancies in the application. So the total area of the sign for the, this hearing, it's really the yellow area, not the black area, but the applicant included the black area as well. And there were some communication, you know, I explained to them, it's only the actual smallest rectangle that fit around the sign. Um, so it really like, you know, the actual area of the sign, proposed sign is a little bit smaller than what the applicant put down because you really look at, you're looking only at the shapes on the yellow surface. Having said that, um, it's hard for me to say, I mean, um, it's hard for me to say if, if removing those uh, food shapes, the cheesecake on the left and uh, two soda cans on the right will uh, make it by right compliance. It's a little bit unclear. I think though, because it'll review, it'll probably result in more than half the reduction of the, um, of the uh, area. It may actually, um, I think at that point you might actually comply. Let me do a quick math if it's okay with you. And either that but, or yeah, we could continue yeah, the yeah. we could entertain right. a request to continue the hearing in order to get answers to those questions, which might be better for the applicant than than a negative vote here. Um, can I ask the applicant, does he know if this could be silk screened out? It, because I do think it might put it in compliance. Did we, did we lose the applicant? I'm not seeing anybody. Oh, oh no, he's, he's okay. yeah, Steve is still here. Steve, can you unmute? Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 All right. I, I haven't talked to Danny about it yet, but my feeling was that based on what Nathan just said about that black area is not part of the facade or the, the, the area of the sign, if that weren't counted and if we took the yellow, um, cut the yellow from the right side of the, of the nice tea into the left side and sewn those two, the two cups and the, the cheesecake, sewn them on the end, it, it may be doable and maybe bring us down to where we need to be. Mm -hmm. Should we continue the hearing to give you a chance to, to look into that and see what's not only feasible, but, but also whether that doesn't just get you into compliance with the, with the ordinance? Right, right. Um, I would have to remeasure everything because uh, Leroy had put in 44 and that's not going to be 44 and we would have to measure the yellow area that would come out i think you can sew those back together and put them on the uh, aluminum sub structure so i think well, um, i think it, 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 it so much the yellow a couple of uh, incisions is it the yellow area or the images that are the problem I think uh, um, if, I, if I may speak, may I speak? Sure. Yep. Yeah, I think it, so basically um, a special permit requirement for signs get triggered if it's uh, greater than 10% of the facade or if there are multiple signs. So it's a little bit ambiguous interpreting this because you have three separate shapes um, taking up the front of the surface. So arguably... It's either three separate shapes, the cheesecake, the nice tea logo, and the two drink cups, or it's one large sign that just kind of spread out over a very large surface area. Either way, though, the way it's presented, uh, it'll require a special permit. And even if the applicant does a corrected calculation, not including the black striped area, even then it'll, uh, it'll still go over the 10% maximum. And the other factor to consider is, um, the side extra side uh, signs, side awning signs, uh, those will be also considered multiple signs. You know, it's, so yeah. just the one front awning sign is allowed by right. Uh, that's within the maximum area of 10%. But this has uh, multiple aspects that require a special permit to grant the approval. If it that was just a yellow awning with the large N and the word nice T words nice T with no other images. Um, 
would you call a yellow awning the whole thing a sign? No, no. Just if hypothetically, if we're only looking, if this proposed sign only had a the nice tea logo in the middle with the the uh, the graphical N and the nice tea words, if it has just those in the proposal, uh, only that area would count as the sign. Uh, the smallest rectangle that can um, in enclose the entire shape, the N and the nice T, that would be the considered the area of the sign, not the right. entire yellow area. So it so sounds like I... you're saying if they if they simply, uh, I think Sherry said silk screen or airbrush or whatever it takes, eliminated the cheesecake and maybe that might be. I'm wondering if that's bubble tea on the right. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Cups on the right, they be in compliance. Is that what? You're saying possibly I so. yes. I I it's hard for me to do a like an act. Uh, I mean, it's I think it's really on the honest of the applicant to provide we measurements if that's so if what, we can, if we yeah. continued the hearing in order to do that, it sure beats having to throw away the sign. Um, and I wonder if that isn't a good idea for everybody to uh, take the time to uh, confirm whether that's feasible and hopefully confirm that if you're just taking the the surface area around the words nice tea with the n logo to the left if you're less than 10 percent you'd be fine we're you'd be fine so doesn't that seem like a which was i think sherry's suggestion in the beginning here that could be an elegant solution here and actually i think it would be quite attractive nicer Instead of what is that green triangle? Right. Yeah, Although again, we out. don't. We don't. Um, I mean, we are looking at detracting from the character of the neighborhood, but we also want to be careful about about um, trying to dictate the contents of signs. <laughs> yes, but I, so, I do think that it, honestly, if just that center part, then it definitely would be in compliance, and it, the whole thing would be done. I mean, that's my opinion, and obviously. I'm not the one making that decision, but I think the idea of continuing this, letting these people have the opportunity to go back and see if they can change this, talking with Nathan and having it remeasured, um, that makes more sense than our rejecting it and them having to start lose all this money. Right, right. How, how does the applicant feel about this suggestion? I think uh, speaking for Danny, we're we're, we're good. We're good. We can uh, work this. So what we so we could it, either. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. And get it in. We'll get it into compliance. We're just looking at how it would look. We're just imagining it, and we think we're okay. So um, why don't we, we? I mean, the two options are to entertain a request to continue this, or a request to withdraw it without prejudice, but it probably makes more sense to just continue it in the hopes that Nathan will get a, will be able to confirm with you after today that based on the modifications you're able to make and the measurements that are derived as a result, right. you, you can, then you could withdraw the application and because you don't need it. Nathan, is this making sense to you? Are we going off the rails here or does this make no, sense? No, I, I think it's a very, um, I, I don't know if I can use the word wise, but I think it's a very thoughtful um, option uh, the board is offering to the applicant. Um, especially, I did not know that the applicant has actually already produced the sign. I, my understanding was that this was a, a, a proposed design, but I think that's a very um, a, a thoughtful option considering the applicant's constraint. Um, the one thing I want to emphasize is that so, um, the while the board cannot regulate the content or the color, uh, it is in your jurisdiction for the special sign permit uh, to consider the size of the sign to be over the limit and also the number of signs rather than just one to allow for multiple signs. So um, I but think the, the flap, the flap on the end, the right one and the left one, are all sewn into. Uh, the sign it's, it's it winds up being one piece. Is that still considered three pieces? Yes, I would okay. think so. Facing another direction, yes, not more images. Yeah, it's uh, extra. So you know, it, it that it, it, that requires a special permit too, because 
you know, our awning sign can have a one front sign by default. On the sides, on the ends right now where the um, drink cups are or the bubble teas are, the side flaps, you are by right allowed to have four inch tall sign uh, on yeah. the sides, a little just text and descriptions. But if it goes taller than that, that that's also part of the special permit requirement. So what if we yeah. if we didn't have advertising on it, just had the yellow color, would that still be considered three pieces? No. It's it's the logos and the text and the images that turn it into a sign. Right. That's what I mean. So if I can if I can have him change the 24 by 44 end piece on both sides to be just yellow, then that would be okay. That would decrease your non-compliance. Right. It doesn't do the whole in job, but yes. In addition to the 10%, but I mean, because it's it wouldn't be three separate signs, right, Nathan? No, yeah, oh, it would be, graphic. yeah, it'd be, but I want to remind the applicant, you you are by right uh, on the awning, you can have four inch tall uh, bottom signs, either on the two side edges where the current flap is or the front bottom edge of the uh, awning, one or the other, but because you uh, will probably keep, want to retain the nice T logo in the front, um, putting the four inch uh, side signs on the side of the awnings uh, might make uh, more practical sense. Um, and oh, I see. What yeah. yeah, you can. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, yeah, um, you can talk about it in more detail um, after the hearing or after yeah. we con If you the board decides to continue it, we can converse in between. That would be and great. What one question, I, and I, I just can't see the picture big enough to know, but it looks like there's a bunch of signs on the doors and and windows. Do those have to go away or or what? I'm not. I I just can't see it well enough. Oh, it's a separate. Thank you, Cherry, for bringing that up. It's a separate building commissioner matter. You are allowed to have um, um up to twenty percent of the window glazing can have signs. Um, okay. and there are actually more signs than the proposed drawing. Uh, when we look at Google View, you can actually see more signs, uh, mm -hmm. but that's a separate uh, building commissioner issue, also a factor for you to consider. And the cup, the large sculpture cup with the logo on the front that we saw earlier, mm -hmm. and I can bring up the Google Maps again if you want, that's also a, considered a ground sign. And that requires another uh, administrative site plan um, approval with the staff. It's a hundred dollar simple approval process, but that's something um, the city I think have, might have missed. But those are some other factors. So there are existing signs, but it's under a different um, different jurisdiction. Yeah, the, the sign to the right that has it looks like times in it or floor numbers. That's part of that building with the black door. I think it's a uh, apartments or something that it goes. Uh, it goes in, so that's not part of Nice T or, or Two Eleven Main Street. That's no. part of that building on the right. Russ, see at the top, it says Rust Block. Rust is about block. That's yes, that's part. not part of your facade. No. No. I know this is not part of our zoning board thing, but it makes me laugh. Um, I I think the cup is adorable, but. Um, uh, I'm picturing everybody using it as a garbage can. I'm a little oh. concerned about it. <laughs> well, um, yep. it is a nice spot and uh, wishing them luck. And I'd like to uh, clarify our strategy at this point. Um, we will respond to, uh, we can either, well, maybe David can wants to weigh in on this. We. Uh, do we need the applicant to request, or we can just we can just okay. vote no no I think it. I think the I think the applicant has to request the continuance. Uh, Nathan, is that? Do you have a yes thought on that? Uh, yes and uh, yeah applicant can request, and it might be safer option because even with the proposed changes, there's a chance that the nice T logo in the middle might slightly just go over the 10%, just in the remote chance, because we don't have an accurate number. But yes, applicant has to request the continuous, from my understanding. Yeah. So is that, and, and then we'd have, to, assuming the applicant wants to do that and give them a chance to speak, um, we would have to figure out when, because I think the three of us 
would have to be present at the next meeting when this is continued. So unless, of course, we don't know now, unless the applicant is able to withdraw the application because it can be done as of right. Yes. No, I can, um, uh, if we had a, is it two weeks? Does that sound like, uh, I mean, well, I don't know where it would. The next, the me excuse me, I'm sorry. The next meeting, I should have said this, I think because it's the second Thursday of the month would be October 12th. It's not a great day for me, although I can tell you October 28th, I'm definitely away. Um, October so, 26th would be the next. No, uh, did I say, yeah, October 26th is, I, I, I told Nathan a while ago, I'm I'm unavailable that night. I'm, I'm also unavailable the 26th, but I could do the 12th. Um, Otherwise we'd go into November 9th. Yeah, no, if I, I guess, Oh boy. Okay. I, I could probably make the 12th work. Um, it's not ideal, but I think I can make it work. I might have to phone in from the car, but uh, so, so would, does, does the applicant want to request a continuous to October 12th, which is the next available meeting date at 5.30 yeah. PM? The meeting on the 12th. We need another meeting? Yeah, because we're going to cut down. Uh, I'm going to change that with Leroy. Okay. So it's smaller and fits in with there. Uh, okay. Yeah. The 12th is good for both of us. Okay. So that, so it, I take it that's a request. Um, I think that, does that need, Nathan, do we, do we have to have a motion to grant the request for a continue? I think we do actually. Yes. I think we do that all the time. It's a, yeah, so, it's a so I guess we just need a motion to grant the request of the applicant to continue the hearing until 5 30 p.m on october 12th and all three of us will be there right sarah as well sarah sherry and me okay yes but do we have a motion to grant the that request so moved well said so, yeah, i'll second that thank you thank so you by roll call. roll call yep uh sherry yes sarah yes david Yes, and that's unanimous. Sherry, thank you for that breakthrough idea. That, <laughs> that, that, was, that was really brilliant. Um, okay. I uh, like being brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, good. So we'll uh, we'll wait to hear through Nathan's office what the applicant is able to do in addressing the uh, reconfiguration of the sign to bring it into compliance without the need. Yes, Nathan? Question? Oh, I'm... Um... I'm sorry. Uh, I was waving to Sarah. Oh, okay. Staff. I'm sorry. Go oh, okay. The yeah. other Sarah. <laughs> so, um, okay. We're not closing and this public hearing, but we can close our public meeting. Correct. Um, uh, yeah, the the hearing remains open on this application, and I, I don't think we had any minutes to approve, right? No, so I think no minutes. I think, and I don't think, is there anything else we need to discuss procedurally unrelated to this application? I don't think so. Um, I think I just want to mention one thing. So yeah. if the applicant determines they are going to meet the 10% with the modifications, they also have the option of withdrawing the application. Exactly. So that, that, yeah. that, yeah. Would, that would be my well, expectation. They yeah. would file a, a request to withdraw the application to close it out. Um. Because otherwise we have to take action on it, and that's a, kind of a waste of everybody's time. So okay, so hopefully that's what they'll be able to do in the next couple of weeks till before the twelfth. All right. So I guess I guess we'll have just a mo we've granted the motion for the continuous. That hearing is still open. It's continued to the twelfth. Um, and, and now I guess we can just have a motion to adjourn. Right? Motion to adjourn. I second. Okay. And then roll call. By roll call, David? Yes. Sarah? Yes. And Sherry? Yes. Okay.